All right. And captioning somewhere. Elizabeth, I always turn to you. Captions. Okay. Yep, it's on. Thank you. Um, well, hi, and welcome to the October. No. <laughs> the November 7th uh, Chaos Community Call. Uh, I did, I, I, speaking of dates, I did learn there is a time between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. in the UK where there are three days on planet Earth because Wait, of the international time zone. So between 10 a.m., so if it's 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Thursday, in the UK, yeah. it is 11 p.m. to midnight in some other location, <laughs> and it's Tuesday. Yeah, or Friday, no, Saturday. Wednesday. There's a there's on Thursday. There's a Wednesday day somewhere, and there's a Friday day somewhere. Whoa. Yeah. So it's true. Just, but none of that would be real if time if if uh, daylight savings time did not exist, right? No, that's not true. No, nope. really. It's okay, the, it's because of the way the international date line is drawn. Ah, wow. All right, so, that's, uh... yeah. So there, there is a time every day where there's three days on Earth. <laughs> wow, I that you're, that you're defies all right of now. my thinking. Yeah, <laughs> this did not come up during Y two K. I just wanna, I just wanna say. All right, so there you go. There's your thing. Learning for the day. I learned it yesterday. You all learned it today. So. Um, so welcome. It's good to have everybody here. Uh, I, we have quite a few things today. Um, so one is, uh, I, some of you may have seen yesterday, um, but not all of you. So I had a, a chance to talk with, uh, Jory from the Linux foundation yesterday, who's the VP of standards there. And part of one of the, part of what we've been talking about in the chaos project, particularly at the last board meeting was um, working chaos metric models towards ISO standards. And so it was a really positive meeting. Um, and just kind of the the synopsis was the way the way that we have currently structured our metrics models as definitions largely is a very good thing. So apparently, if you have structured your um, documents as processes, it gets to be considerably more complex because that's when, patent issues and patent trolls come in and we don't have that so yep. that's a good thing no, I've, yeah i've experienced that process patent issue before in life man that is processes are ugly to patent so always litigated yeah we don't, absolutely you know even she's like you might mm. want to re-examine some of your metric models that if they are alluding to processes that you kind of even back off on some of that so I mean, that, that suggests to me that the DEI ones will be more difficult to patent because those are principally processes. So um, those are the metrics. Yeah. But like the event, yeah. the event metric, we're just looking at metric models. So, right, right. Okay. So it doesn't matter if the underlying metric is a process. It's that the model so. is yes. a definition. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Definition. I'll, I'll get clarity on that. I found this yeah. on the web. Okay. And Siri, yeah. agree. So that's cool. Yeah, Siri agrees. I don't know if she was triggered, but yeah. Um, and the way we've been licensing models as well under the MIT license is not going to be a problem. There was a suggestion. I don't remember what the new license was, but it's like a contributor or something license that is the recommended license. But that's also not an issue. Um, and then from what I understand... There is a foundation at the LF called the Joint Development Foundation, the JDF. And the JDF has been approved by ISO to put forward standards. I am not 100% sure on how this works, but I think the, the premise is, is that um, setting standards around open source from ISO's perspective was very complex just because you could potentially fork something, you could just the way that open source like kind of lives <laughs> in this mm -hmm. very kind of shifting world. Mm -hmm. uh, but from what I understand, the LF has made an argument through the JDF that, um, that they can at least um, 
support a process by which standards could come out of open source. So the JDF is not the issuer of the ISO standard, but they can kind of act on behalf of the chaos project to put them in front of ISO that says, you know, we've, we've kind of prepared these and they should. No, they have the, they have knowledge of the bureaucracy. And so we won't get tangled up in that is what I hear. I think that's it. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not getting that totally correct because I'm not, I haven't really had a chance to take a look at JDF. Um, so the process that, is great. Oh, go ahead. That sounds correct. I mean, I think having someone that's whose role it is to facilitate standards, that's, mm -hmm. That's how an organization propagates standards. So it, that makes sense. I've seen that before. Okay. Yeah. So the JDF is not the standard setting body. They are the right group. The, Greece. The, the Greece. That brings that forward. <laughs> so at this point, uh, Jory, I think, is talking mm -hmm. to some lawyers at the LF to just kind of understand lawyer things. <laughs> I don't really <laughs> understand at all. Um, what, what's going on there. So... Um, she's going to get back to me, and then uh, it looks like we can probably start this process in 2024, you know, awesome. just with the holidays coming yeah. up and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. So I don't know if anybody has any questions, but it was a really positive conversation. I was really happy to to, to be part of that. What, can you yeah, um, no. expand that acronym JDF for me for the notes? The Joint Development Foundation. Thanks. Yep. And thanks for taking notes. Sure. All right. Okay. Um, so, any other... uh, qu a question. Uh, so I know that in Open Chain, uh, they have some ISO uh, standard. Yes. So that this standard also initialized from JDF or? I yes. So that I, I'm guessing. So um, Jory had brought up Open Chain, and I'm I I would suspect that Open Chain, at, and they're more process oriented, but I would suspect Open Chain was part of that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think, again, I'm kind of speculating here, but I think SPDX conversations with SPDX, the mm -hmm. license and security, like bill of materials standard, uh, has also been part of that discussion with JDF. Awesome. Yep. Um, so anyway, it was, it was good. It looks like, oh, uh, maybe a few things there. There's a tool that can, so obviously the way that we've written metrics models is not in an ISO standard at the moment, like document wise. And yeah. so we, there's a tool that can, I don't know how it works, but there's a tool that can take the markdown that we currently have and uh, get it more iso -y, get it more like, like templated for uh, submission to ISO. Uh, we will probably have to hire somebody just to put the finishing touches on the document. And she had said that a, a writer is about $150 an hour, which is something that we could afford. So I don't see that as being cost prohibitive at all. Just the documented things to hear uh, one poor thing? Um, just the hundred, are you asking about the, the cost, $150 an hour? Uh-huh. But I guess we have GPT-4 Turbo. And what is, which is good enough. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, we may get good enough. We'll, we'll find out. But if we need to hire somebody to help, I'd rather not, like, I'd rather just hire somebody, to be honest with you, to, like, get these done. It seems very, like, <laughs> very detail-oriented. So, All right. cool. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments? Uh Actually, I have a question, uh, uh, and uh, not 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 question actually. My comment is that uh, you know our goal to to initialize this ISO things uh, is not not just uh, to knock it down to to finally publish uh, ISO standard. I think we can use this opportunity to to you know combine more people from different organizations from all over the world to working together with us. So I'm guessing, yeah. <laughs> um, even so, we 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 already have some a uh, lot of good metrics model metric, metrics model already. But I think we can use this uh, opportunity to rewrite or re publish, uh, refactor the whole metrics model to mm -hmm. to involve more people come with I, us. 
I, I agree. And I think we're probably going to have to do a little bit of that refactoring. And then, I mean, the way the conversation started was, um, to your point, Yahui, like with, with so much uh, government interest right now in securing supply chains and um, getting transparency on supply chains, yes, it is meta-norma, um, that that having these as standards could really increase the number of people that we are communicating with because they would be using these standards as part of securing their supply chain, whether it's in well, Europe. Yeah, uh, in the last uh, Saturday, uh, actually in last uh, weekend, I got a chance to have some conversations from the uh, uh, from the people with people from different universities like mm -hmm. Peking universities and Tsinghua University, and uh, of course, Liang from Nanjing University, uh, those professors also have highly interesting to involve such things. Perfect. Well, it's it's often it's often running and it's looking good. At least the start looks good. So we'll see how it looks in January of 2024. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, all right, cool. Well, I was pretty happy to bring that here. And it's, it's nice to know that the models like that have been coming out of this group are looking to move towards towards ISO standards. Um, it's good that we accidentally chose the right structure. <laughs> yeah, I agree that it's not process oriented. <laughs> yeah. we, we happened to, we I made all the right yeah. choices accidentally. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I, I wanted to bring this up to people. So um, this is some work that Don, uh, had been doing. So this is a way, let me give you some background here. This is a way for us to think about metrics models as kind of a process, um, as how you could kind of start thinking about them collectively. So as opposed to just looking at one metric model, how might you use a series of metrics models to answer questions that are um, important for your organization? So we, okay, so one of them is, this is chaos one. This is Don's starter project health metric model. So we had kind of, we're kind of recalling it and you know, rebranding it chaos one. So, which is just a starting point. It seems to be the one that in many of our conversations we are pointing people to. It's just, it's the one that always shows up. It's just, if you need to get started with metrics models, start here. And so yeah. that's, that's the starter project health metric model. So the idea here is that you would take a look at the four metrics that are in the starter project health metric model. So these are all metrics at this point. So you would get a, a survey of kind of how these look with respect to the project you care about and the time frame that you care about. Just kind of normal stuff that we've been doing. And I think Yahui, like you have this deployed in Compass. You know what I mean? Like you just give a view. Mm -hmm. The idea then is that um, and Dawn was, I think, kind of reflecting on um, how she would use these metrics at VMware. And so it serves as a starting point that you may want to, in this case, improve responsiveness, or you may want to consider how to improve release frequency, improve bus factor. And I just added this one down in the lower left, or I'm sorry, lower right corner, just to make it like balanced. Um, and each of these then is another metric model that you would kind of run and take a look at the results. If you're concerned about responsiveness, these are by no means perfect at the moment. You know what I mean? But the intention is to, to start leading people from one metric model, which is the start here. Hi, Daniel, which is the, can you put the minutes in for Daniel? Um, so it's starting here and then from there, where do you go based on what you would like to accomplish? So I don't know what people's thoughts are or reactions are to this. Mm -hmm. I think it's quite good because it's at least to give the people the, the detailed introductions, how to use how to use those metrics model based on the specific purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, that's exactly it. As opposed to just saying, here's 17 okay. metrics models, go figure it out. Yeah. This is meant to guide people a little bit. On that it's, me, 
it meet our community's vision that uh, to provide some consultancy uh, service for people who need such support. You got it. Yep. Yeah. And so this is, um, for a long time, we've kind of put the metrics models out there or metrics that for that matter. And we just say, here they are. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> you know, we're, um, we've written these, their definitions and you all figure it out. I think to your point, Ehoe, this is a good step towards mm -hmm. like that consultancy or we begin to add value. We begin to ascribe value to how our metrics models can help you. Um, and I think this is a good step in that regard. And I think this is a good step with what Donna is doing too with the data science efforts. It starts moving us off being completely agnostic on metrics and metrics models and start kind of encouraging people or directing people to different paths or um, that they may have. So it's a, it's a fair point. I agree with you. What are other people's thoughts? Elizabeth likes the visual. So this is made in Canva. I have never used Canva before until like- Now I, you're an addict. Now I'm, now I'm completely addicted. Everything is like, a, it's a Canva something or other to me whether it's an infographic or a, this is a mind yeah. map. I didn't even really know what a mind map was <laughs> until. Yeah, I, I saw you open it and I was like, oh, what's Canva? And now I'm spending like time. Oh, yeah, goodbye. goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, Gary. <laughs> um, I learned that this started out, I, I think it started out as a way to make wedding invitations. And it just kind really? of... Yeah, and it just continued to evolve into a way to make really nice. I'm I'm probably gonna end up paying for this just because I think it's just a really great tool for us to start visualizing things that we do in the chaos project. So, so um, what are some other? I don't love this. Is like these are descriptions here. You know how you would think about some of the results. I don't love how that looks, but we can sort that out later. Yeah. Um, what are what are other people's thoughts on kind of these types of visualizations? They're, they're easy, much easier to follow than the PowerPoint visualizations that we've been using. So just two thumbs up to the layout and capacity of the tool. Yep, right on. So I, my guess is, is that if you see the title here is contribution health, like it would, we would probably make something similar, I'm guessing around like the viability models that Gary had or um, like I don't know, um, upstream management health. I don't, whatever the, like th these different, I, I think this is about understanding the, the health of the projects that you care about and the contributions towards that project. I think, I think that's kind of the context here. So we'd have a kind of a series of these that are kind of looking at different things you might care about in open source, contribution health being one of them. And I think Gary, like the stuff that you had done, like the viability mm -hmm. stuff, that's a little different than this. And we would need to frame it a little bit differently. I think it's looking slightly at a different spot in that open source. Oh world. yeah, absolutely. I mean. Thinking about whether or not you have good contributors or whether or not your contributions are good is, is different than if you should be using a product. Yep. And so we would structure something similar around viability, you know, kind mm -hmm. of here's where you would start. And then you have all of the, I think it's four different viability models. Yep. Like, and we could say like, you want to do this, you want to do this, you want to do this, you want to do this. And it might give people a better sense of, of where they want to go. As opposed to just so it's like a it's like a standardized infographic template almost. Yep, you got it. Um, okay, cool. Well, it's nice. So so far we're two for two in this meeting. The ISO stuff was well received, and the <laughs> the Canva stuff was well received. So usually we're such haters. I know. I'm so used <laughs> to just absolutely defending everything, but. <laughs> Uh, all right. Um, my, I get one of the things I don't know how this would tie into software. So if I think about things like Augur, and if I think about things like Compass, I don't know how that something like this maps to these particular tools. I, I think like if I think of Compass as it represents 
the metric models implementation. I think these are annotations or additional info within the tool. If if we wanted to carry these um, higher level conceptualizations forward in the tool, mm -hmm. because because as you know that uh, in the later of this month we will we will deploy another function in Compass about how to instruct people to improve their communities based on our chaos metrics model in chaos uh, in Compass uh, based on the Compass Insights report. I'd like to export this page into some models to let people know, okay, if you found some things happened, you will, if you want to improve that, you can do such things. Mm -hmm. And uh, they will give us the, uh, very clear instructions, but that's really based, based on the how we going forward on these pictures. In terms uh, of like kind of finalizing yeah. the pictures? Yeah, like, uh, like detail the instructions or, or, or the suggestions. Great. And this would also be, I think, premised on, like if we were to use this in something like Compass, like we would have to ensure that all of these metrics models are deployed in Compass. Uh, I I think so. I think so. And, and I believe so. Because currently, for example, the variability, we are looking for the way to how to, you know, deploy and implement all the all the metrics and metrics model already in Compass. Okay. We are doing that. Okay. All right. Um, I also like this because it um, it helps. One of the things that I think early on with metrics, before we had metrics models, we continued to just kind of create metrics. And so we went from five metrics to 10 to 20. To 80. 50 to 80 and it we would just say here are the metrics and people were like what i don't know what to do with this and so we're at a point right now with metrics models where let's just say we have you know 20 or under and this is a way to start organizing the conversation around them and i think metrics models actually organize the conversation around metrics a bit to bring them together in meaningful ways um, but this is really kind of organizing the conversation around deployment of them. So we don't get, one of the things I put in the minutes is that maybe one of the things we do in the metrics model meeting is start thinking more about these types of things and less about just the production of more metrics models <laughs> that we think about them in practice, not just the creation of more. Just from from how we from what I learned from just building more metrics, it doesn't always work real well. We should have probably spent a little bit more time thinking about the organization of those metrics. Okay. All right, cool. Thank you. Um, this is more of a note. The viability metric models have been released. So um, that process is complete. You can click on that link. And follow them. We did talk about the viability metrics models in Monterey. So there was a nice panel with uh, Ashley and Nithya and Don that talked about concepts of viability. It was very well attended, Gary, if you care. I mean, it was a pretty full, oh, full room. I care. <laughs> <laughs> nope, don't care. Nope, don't no, care. I, I, um, I was telling my wife the whole time, I'm like, I know we're in Punta Cana, but I could still make the conference. <laughs> <laughs> it was a really nice conversation. Um, and honestly, it was, I don't know that I, when I was looking at my notes that I had really pulled anything new out, it was honestly just a lot of affirmation that these are, these are important and these are things mm -hmm. that, that folks care about. So, um, so anyway, that, that was what happened there. Okay. And it sounds like maybe one of the things that I'll maybe think about over the course of the next couple of weeks is maybe Gary, like how I could think about the viability metrics models in terms of that that Canva graphic. Yeah, I uh, can't promise that within the next few weeks I'm still working on, or I have the viability blog post in my like external communications processing pipeline. And then I'm doing, I guess, my real job for a little while. Oh, I but can. I can definitely look at. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah no, I mean, I was, would I would be happy to work with you on it. Okay. No, that was on me. And so, I mean, maybe the one thing I did have on the viability metrics models is like what that I can talk to you on Slack, but like, where is that easy start for people to think about viability? Like what might that, that middle that's, oh, uh, for the middle, it's like, what software should myself or my, like my project, my organization or myself use? That's like the landing point of, um, why you might care about viability. And then is there one of the four viability metrics models that you put together? Is there kind of one in your mind that you just, you start with this one, you know, and then I think the... everybody starts with compliance and strategy by accident, but I don't know that that should be made intentional by the Canva either. So Okay. Because a lot of people care about CVEs, a lot of people care about licensing before they start thinking about like anything else to do with open source, right? Yep. I guess <laughs> mitigating risk might be a central point. I'll have, to, I'll have to think about it. Yeah, think about it. Like what if you were doing it? I know that some people might end up there by accident, but if you wanted to like guide the conversation like what would be the first few things oh sure it's definitely the risk thing it's definitely that there is no standard model um for mitigating risk that you're using uh open source software for a lot of people default to security and to licensing um and then don't take it any further than that and don't criticize whether or not that was the right place to start gotcha okay that's helpful thank you sure okay um all right, so uh, moving right along. Um, I did want to kind of mention this. I have not been at the common work group meeting for feels like a hundred years only because I had a standing just it just couldn't make it. Um, so does anybody uh, does anybody have some insight how common is going? Elizabeth, were you there on the last one? Yeah, the last one was, I think, Sean, myself, and Kevin. So we decided to cancel that. The one before that, though, um, I have to look. Let me look. I don't remember. It's like been a month. So let me look. Okay. I think I had talked kind of with with Kevin um, just, just in person. Um, but the idea here is to, I think Common would start like to start taking a look at the published metrics models and really reflecting on a couple of things, just the readability of the models, kind of just an audit, I think, of the metrics models and see how well they appear to be structured, just see how well they appear to tell their story. Um, there is, there might be, I think, some reflection on the, the metrics that are in there or the number of metrics that are in there. So just continuing to, to just reflect and um, like I said, do that audit on the existing metrics models. I think that's yeah. kind of where Common is going right now with respect to connection with metrics models. I think that makes sense because we didn't really put a limit on the number of metrics at the start and some of them are pretty overloaded, I would say. Yeah, and so if we could reduce some of them and, and like some could be larger, particularly if they are um, like, kind of those easy to gather metrics, you know, some of the activity metrics. But anyway, I think it's just kind of a, a back and forth with common at this point is kind of how it's going to go forward. Okay. Uh, moving right along. Um, I This is kind of a proposal here that in this group, that we don't necessarily bring forward new metrics models that I think they're still going to show up from say the university working group or the OSPO working group. I think that's Gary. I think that's like where the viability one started, mm -hmm. but we really spend the time in, in this working group kind of doing these things above focusing on perhaps ISO standards focus, you know, like, cause there's going to be work involved 
around the metrics models. And we focus on how to draw together the 20 metrics models that we have in meaningful ways with software. But in this group, we don't necessarily propose new metrics models. We take what we have, the artifacts that we have, and, and make them either standards or accessible in ways that we haven't done in the past. I don't know what people, people's reaction are to that. And we have these as well, but. Uh, I mean, going back to the Canvas stuff, I, I think that makes sense because helping, I think communicating about what we have is probably more important right now to actually getting uptake and standardization is important. The only metric model that comes to mind that I think we probably should do based on the first Canva that I saw is the, the licensing metric model, which I think just falls together with like three metrics we already have. And Gary, don't you have a viability one that looks at that, like compliance? Yeah, maybe it fits there. Yeah, it, it focuses that, that. on compliance and security. Mm -hmm. So we might have one that could be a good starting point. Okay. Anybody else have comments or concerns about that? I mean, we're kind of doing this anyway, but I just want to. Uh, I, I partially agree on that point because I don't think our kind of metrics model would increase uh, with no limitation. Like uh, currently we have like 20 metrics model and uh, and then in the next year we are our goal to you know grow up to another a hundred metrics model. I I I don't think that is our goal. So we must produce the benefit to the people, no matter from organizations or or the open source communities. So I truly I truly want to to make some real benefit based on our exist metrics models. And uh, except for the ISO things could be handled in this working group. And also like you mentioned, we can do how to make it accessible and the deploymentable uh, of the metrics model in this group. But um, uh, another point is that um, uh, if we, during the creation discussion, we pop up some new ideas about some new metrics model, where should we go? go to the common or some other yeah, probably group. common i mean it'd still be okay to post it and it might be useful to um kind of think about how if we have a new metric model where it might fit just with respect to again if i just go back to like the viability stuff like that had a fit in the ospo working group or we have the university working group as well. I'm suspecting they will have some metrics models that they will be producing. So I think it's kind of important that if we have a new metric model, we're thinking about kind of an audience that would care about that model. Mm -hmm. Cause I feel like sometimes we've just created metrics and metrics models without really thinking about the audience. Like I know we have the user stories, but they just kind of, we just kind of, they were kind of one-off productions sometimes. And I'd, I'd like to make sure they're tied to a, some particular context. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. All right. Um, and I agree, Yuhui, like our goal, it's like just increasing number of contributors for no real reason. <laughs> we don't want to just increase the number of metric models for <laughs> no real, like that's not a real mm -hmm. measure I for agree. us. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I think it's also a good opportunity to use this ISO standard work to restructure, I mean, to set up the whole structure of the metrics model yep. to make it like a whole, pro like a, make it like a complete product from mm -hmm. the chaos community. Yep. It's not just the individual metrics model to produce some partially benefit, but it could give, give the people a, you know, some overview or landscape of the whole things. Yep, agreed. All right, cool. Um, all right, we have a few minutes here. Yuhui, you had put these, the contributor domain persona, all of this yeah, list. The, actually, this is the homework. I, I promise that I will I will do that for, for a couple of weeks ago uh, and uh, finally make some progress. 
So here is the blog I write to introduce the contributor personnel model, which have some uh, which have three sub models, and uh, at least there like uh, row personnel models, and uh, and uh, and the milestone personnel models and domain personnel models. Uh, I give them the details, the um, thinkings in this blog. Add some pictures there. Update that today. Could you, Yuhui, can you kind of give uh, an overview of what the, the goal is here? Actually, I uh, my thinking that we are uh, in our matrix model structure, we are lacking of contributor models. This aspect, so I set up this a foundation contributor models. This is the first level, mm -hmm. and in the second level. Uh, um, we want to, I wanted to set up this personal model at first. And in this personal models, I divided it into three types. First is, um, you know, uh, the domain personnel models. The second is row personnel model and the second the milestone personnel models. So in this blog, the whole things I want to I want to introduce the, about this whole whole personnel models how they how it works what does it mean, and uh, I explain that a little bit why do we need that, and uh, it's a coming it, it should be coming with the release of these three models together, so I also post another three models uh, this this three models definitions. Together. Gotcha. So are these are these kind of understood in the same way that we understand like metrics models here? Or are these like who 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 cares about these? So is it like the a community manager that's trying to get an understanding of the contributors that are part of the community? I think a lot of people would uh, care about the uh, these models. So in each of single de uh, models definition, I, I write it down in another three uh, Google documentations. So I list that uh, like uh, uh, investors, uh, community managers or maintainers would care about that. Okay. So would these, do you see these as being like complementary to perhaps some of these metrics models or are they kind of unique on their own? I don't know if that makes sense. I think so because currently we have something to focus on the community collaborations and something about software uh, software per se, like uh, licenses, uh, security things, but uh, we are lacking of uh, this contributor um, metrics models to, firstly, we should set up the, their profiles, our personnel, and secondly, we will observe their uh, movement during the working in the communities to see how it move based on some context. Gotcha. So it's very important to let people know how to set up such connections or help those contributors in the communities. And also we need to notice that, pay attention that um, maintainers would get, would get tired after so many supports. Uh, uh, I mean, issue support, review support coming from the different other contributors. We should pay attention on that. I do. So would you, do you kind of envision this if we were to think about it like in a structure like this, that it wouldn't so, be necessarily contribution health, it would be like contributor yeah. health or something like that to which these different models could provide insight towards contributor sure. you know, community contributor health. So kind of like the viability metric or kind of whatever we call these things now, the mm -hmm. viability 
mind map that mm -hmm. there's a variety of different ways that you can try to understand viability. And there's a starting point for understanding viability and that this would be, there's a, a variety of different ways that you can understand contributors within your community. And this would be a map to help you kind of look more deeply at that. Is that mm -hmm. fair? Yeah. Okay. I can do that. Okay. And actually, the that because this is actually really similar to kind of the model, Gary, you're following as well. Here's a blog post that has all the things. Yeah. And then here are the particular metric models that that kind of live, you know, within that. Yeah, because the thing. metrics model we, we give following the template, we focus on the key information provided here, like uh, user stories, like uh, some definitions part, but how to use that. Uh, so I'd like to use a blog to to explain that a little, a little yeah. bit more. Okay, um, that makes sense. So uh, isn't there a phrase about like turtles, stack turtles? Like we- all, all <laughs> Turtles all the way down, yes. <laughs> like how Like how many, because like what, what are these then? Like I guess is my- I, I, I think they feed into each other, right? Like you want different forms of how to ingest the same information. Yep. Because I, I think, I, I like the idea of thinking this of this as an infographic. Because I think like I could go and read an article and learn about something and get a little bit more depth, or I can see the infographic and it gives me the like general overview that I think most people scan for when okay. they're trying to introduce themselves to a new topic. Like this to me feels like a more accessible way to spread the word about metrics models that we think are particularly notable or important. Um, I really like this for contribution health because it gives me the motivation that I would have for caring about it which isn't something that is made super obvious by, oh yeah, I'll just click through to the metrics model for contrib contributor health, right? So then, okay, I like that. So then it would have without doing it here, like we would have this infographic that's in front of us and like realistically, we could have like a link here that's like link to the blog post or somewhere, like link to the blog post. Sure. Read more if you want to really read the narrative behind this. Um, mm -hmm. Gotcha. So there's this is the kind of the first thing that people see. There's a blog post that they could go read that gives them more details, like a more of a narrative around this particular thing that this infographic that they're looking at, um, and then the supporting metric models are whatever around here in some way. Absolutely. And if we don't have. If we don't have a blog post, we could simply point to the definitions for those metric models. Well, yeah, I mean, until it, we have a until yeah, we have until a blog have, post, it yeah, seems like it would be easy enough to just the blog post. Like some may need a blog post, I guess, like this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Agreed. Okay, well, let me. I, um, just, they don't all have them right now, is what I would say. So we have to have another default if. Mm -mm. So why don't maybe just from an action item from my perspective, I'll try to put together one of these, like I said, Gary, for the viability stuff. Okay. It certainly won't be perfect. And um, Yahui, let me try to put one of these together also for the contributor domain, domain personas so that mm -hmm. we would have kind of three of these in a row that would help people understand contribution health, the viability of projects that they're about ready to engage with, um, and then the contributors that are actually in your project, how you could gain some better insight. That'd be a pretty cool start from my perspective. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Um, and I, I like your point too, Gary, it, giving people a, like points of entry to engage with the different metric models in different ways because there, there's a real likelihood that whatever communication activity is a metric model that might show up in a variety of these infographics. It's just kind of what it means around contribution health versus what it means in a different, like those are, it's possible that each one of these models would exist in a variety of these. I think it's a point you had made earlier. Yeah. And I think it, it ultimately just increases, like, if you think of it like that big funnel shape, it just makes the funnel a little bit wider of people who might want to use downstream um, 
other tools to actually measure this. All right, this is cool. Uh, all right, that's great. So thank you. Um, so I have a few action items, I'll remember those. So, um, okay, a couple notes before we head out. I'm gonna start with this last one here at the end first. Um, starting December in about a month, we go on a one month break here in the Chaos Project. So we have no chaos meetings. I think the only meetings that will occur are usually around chaos con, which is going to be February 1st in Brussels. Hope to see you there. I'm hoping to have chaotic shirts printed by then, and I will bring a bunch of chaotic shirts. <laughs> yeah. Which will be cool. And Sean, I'll bring you a hoodie if you haven't made it up here by then. Yeah. Well, I'm coming to your house for Christmas. So. so. Oh, super. <laughs> 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 uh and then next it looks like next our next meeting is thanksgiving week in the u.s so we are also usually very light on meetings and thanksgiving what are people's thoughts it's the tuesday before so would people be okay just would we miss if we don't have that meeting do we not there's one there's one more before december 11th so we would have one more meeting before we head out for the break Okay. Why don't I don't? My, yeah. my inclination is to do that. Like we don't have a meeting Thanksgiving week. Just a lot of us here are moving different directions, or people are arriving at our houses. It's just a very busy week here in the U.S. Um, yeah, are you, and our universities are all off, and most people are traveling on Tuesday. Yep. Yeah. So if they can. My recommendation is we don't meet in two weeks. I can, I'll actually, now that I am in love with Canva, um, I'm going to put together these <laughs> things and I'll share them on the, in Slack. So um, Elizabeth, soon, soon the chaos website will just be Canva. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't giant infographic. <laughs> let me, let me explain the anti-pattern of the golden hammer. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I like your thinking, Gary. So <laughs> Uh, all right. Um, cool. So that's, we're off in two weeks just for a U.S. holiday. And then we'll be back in a month for this meeting, but I think we can work asynchronously. Elizabeth, can you take care of that? Yes. Okay, cool. Everybody, it's good to see you. It's always a very pleasant conversation. A lot of very positive movement for, for my perspective. So cool things happening with the metric yeah. model group. Absolutely. Very good. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye.